Hello everyone and welcome to Thursday Live Lessons. My name is Aldrin Guerrero. I am your instructor for today. I will be answering any and all of your questions. Joining me are Mr. Aaron, the voice Nakamura. Say what's up, Aaron. What's up? Mr. Kahai, the legend Fergan. Say what's up, Kahai. What's up? So the guys are here. Like I said, we're going to be answering any and all of your questions uh, that we get here at Ukulele Underground via emails, via phone calls, via texts, via, hey, uh, my auntie was asked, wonderful, wonderful ask, uh, how do you make that beef stew, Kahai? God save What's... big save. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make the big save guy make it. <laughs> Home market Mondays. <laughs> I just had big save beast too. So mm. yeah. you know, I uh, my my mother in law visited like a couple months back, and she made beef stew, quote unquote beef stew. And I'm like, this is not beef stew. It is good. It's not like it wasn't good or anything, but it's just like, where's the you tomato? Just... It was like tomato sauce. Exactly. But like, I guess in the mainland, like beef yeah. stew. Is brown. <laughs> <laughs> I just what? It's like a beef, uh, like kind of gravyish. Soup. Yeah, like beef <laughs> soup. I just it was you know it, it was like the weirdest thing. I guess I've never had actual beef stew. <laughs> I've already had like Hawaiian beef where's, stew. Where's the Portuguese sausage inside? Of this? <laughs> oh, <laughs> like stuff like that. Are oh, you are oh, you going super local? <laughs> <laughs> Right on, guys. So Thursday live lesson, like I said, we try to answer any of all your questions. Um, Kahai is going to uh, say the questions to me, and I'm going to try to answer them as best as I can. And all three of us collectively will try to come up with the best answer just for you. So Kahai, let's go uh, with the first question. Yeah, uh, this is a two-parter from Paul. Oh, okay, I love these. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, and th this one was sent last week, okay. but we got it at the very last second, so we couldn't ask it last mm. week. Um, so he said, I have a question about the anchoring discussion that you had okay. the week before. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, as background, I would also call myself a floater as I rarely anchor. Yeah. But since I mostly play arpeggio style pieces or straight strumming at the moment, it's probably not a big deal as there's mm -hmm. not a lot of hand movement to mm -hmm. get out of position with. Mm -hmm. If you have some tips of some good songs to practice when an anchored style really makes sense, then I'll give it a go and mm -hmm. see if I can get the hang of it. At the moment, it feels weird. Okay, um, so just right out of the bat, we gotta kind of clarify some stuff. Like the anchoring thing is, um, you know, it's just a suggestion, just one way to do finger picking. It's not yeah, like, so oh, so what? What is an anchoring? So anchoring is like using your pinky. Usually your pinky, you can use whatever finger and stuff. Usually your pinky, um, you anchor it down like this. So you place your pinky down on your fretboard. It's hard to no, see. No, on the sound. Sorry, in the soundboard. Yeah. Uh, you place it down like this, and um, and that's kind of anchoring it down. Okay, so you. The rest of your fingers, you have four fingers right here on your four strings, you know? Um, you can kind of play, uh, use finger picking for those four strings. You don't necessarily need five fingers kind of, you know, um, always on the go with your ukulele. That's just one way to play it. Um, a, a lot of people, you know, like um, he said he called himself a floater, which is, you know, like uh, it's kind of floating like this where none of your fingers are anchored down on the soundboard. You kind of have all five fingers up here in the air. So whether you're using three, four fingers, two fingers to finger pick and stuff, it's just kind of floating like this. Um, the reason why I gravitate towards the, um, the anchor down one because like i mentioned earlier i have four fingers i don't you know i don't have five strings so having five fingers on these and stuff doesn't you know it's not really necessary so i don't you know i, I don't use the, the floating technique because of that also because it keeps it at a good position all right well, using the um use the anchoring method like this will make sure that if i you know if i pick with my thumb it'll stay there in place. See how steady my hand is? If I use my pointer finger, ring, uh, uh, ring finger, middle finger, whatever I wanna use. I don't normally use four fingers to pick anyway. I only really use three, so even more so of a reason. But even if I use my ring finger, every time I pick, notice my hand, it kind of doesn't move. It stays stationary. So that means I'm always going to, uh, going to land correctly. If I'm doing this, there's a chance my hand is going to move. See? I'm trying to keep them as, uh, as steady as possible. 
but there's sometimes there's just no helping your hand moving and it might move out of position so you you know i i run the risk of kind of missing one of the strings and stuff not a very high risk so this technique works uh with, with a lot of people especially people who've kind of um gone through like guitar like kind of played guitar before and stuff and i'm I'm starting to think and I'm willing to bet that it came from, you know, like somebody who uh, was proficient with guitar or was proficient with uh, with banjo or things like that with, uh, with finger picking kind of, you know, kind of do uh, kind of went over to this. It's like it just makes sense. Yeah. And it's not like it's wrong. So that's the one thing I got to clear the air. It's not wrong to not anchor your finger. It's just a totally different style to do. Yes, go ahead. Uh, to clarify, you're, yeah. you meant that uh, the the floating kind of style came from yes, guitar yes, or yeah. banjo yeah yeah guitar banjo and stuff like that like stuff that would uh would require a lot of finger picking and uh you know for for ukulele you know since we're not a banjo we're not a guitar and so we just kind of evolve and uh and figure out different ways to uh to do a technique a finger picking technique and stuff so um growing up it was you know it was uh it was kind of normal to kind of plant your pinky finger like this there was no words like anchor or, or anything like that these are words that we all you know just created kinda, just kind of made came up like with, yeah we came up with what we there, <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah there's no such thing as chunk or whatever you know like these are all things that we created so growing up and kind of playing the ukulele and uh and especially when i grew up there was a lot of that like um Kyle creative boys kind of style so troy fernandez himself kind of used a, a lot of this like finger picking style techniques and um, you know and kind of slacky ish right so kind of planting your your pinky finger just ensures that you're never out of position um that doesn't mean that if you don't do that that you will be out of position because you know it, it doesn't it doesn't ensure that it, it you know that uh, that you're going to be out of position just because you don't anchor your fingers it's just a style it's kind of like you know i wear my hat forward some people wear their hat backwards it works it's whatever you wear your hat however you want it you know if it works for you it didn't works for you now if you would like to try the anchored way of, of doing so so we got that out of the way it's not wrong floating your fingers not wrong anchoring your fingers not wrong either so they're both like a style of finger picking okay now that we got that out uh if you would like to experiment with the anchoring style of uh of finger picking i would um I would say just take any of the songs that you already do with your, you know, with your floating style, quote unquote, of of playing ukulele. Take any of those songs and um and just anchor your, you know, anchor your pinky finger if you would like to try that out. There's not like a oh I'm sorry about that I gotta mute my uh, mute my phone. <laughs> but yeah, I mean with with any it's basically exactly the same thing. The only difference is that you're um taking your pinky finger down here and making sure that you don't go out of uh, out of position that's really it that's the only reason why we um why we anchor our pinky finger down for the people who do anchor and stuff and um there's other anchoring techniques um there's an anchoring technique for uh for tremolos there's a lot of you know there's a lot of reasons why we we anchor our fingers uh, so if i were to do an anchoring technique with the uh, with the middle finger to do a tremolo and that just ensures that my thumb is always in the right position so that when I move my wrist, it'll come out for that tremolo. So there's there's reasons why we do anchors, but you don't have you don't have to do them because I can just kind of go like this, no anchor of any sort, and it'll work. But for me, this just seems a little bit uh, risky because I might, you know, I might go out of position doing this. I might hit the E string. You know, that's just me. But it's not like it's not it for everyone you know it's just like um, like something that works for myself and a lot of other people a lot of people anchor their uh, anchor their fingers but we like to teach it here on ukulele on the ground because that's kind of what i do um but we're not saying that you know floating is is wrong or is bad or stop floating your fingers and you know do, do that totally up to you but if you do <laughs> want, if you do want to um want to learn want to experiment yeah there's there's no like specific like oh give me a song that would be good for this technique and stuff any of the songs you already do with your floating uh with your floating hand you can uh you can try those out with your uh you know with your new kind of anchoring hand and i love that you're trying both you know both ways because you just never know you know there might be a song that like a floating hand might might be a little bit difficult you know and because uh not every finger picking is going to be a pattern and that's that's the thing for me if it was a pattern and i just kind of do you know like um 
the same exact strings, hit the same exact strings every single time, maybe a floating one would work for me. But because I have to, you know, I have to kind of mix it up every now and then, me anchoring my pinky finger here is really, really, really important to me so that I am accurate with the, with the strings that I hit and that I'm always in position when I need to. All right, so yeah, to answer your question, take some of the stuff that you're already doing, practice that with a um, with an anchored finger. What do you guys think? Sorry, I'm gonna go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I think too, um, the anchoring helps a lot when you're standing up too. Yes, so, you yeah, know, if, yeah, you're, yeah. if you're sitting down, it doesn't really matter because your That's arm true. isn't gonna move that mm. much, your hand isn't gonna move that much. But mm. if you're on stage and you're kind of moving around, like, Anchoring will just make sure that you're right where yeah, you need to be. Yeah, that's 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 a very yeah, good point. Yeah. So if you're not if you're not standing, if mm -hmm, you're not mm -hmm. moving around yeah. on stage, then you can do whatever yeah, you want. Yeah. It's probably gonna your hand is probably gonna stay yeah. stationary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but I, especially for like you know your the way My that style, you, yeah, yeah cause you perform, it's pretty aggressive, and I move around a lot and stuff. Yeah, it's like, it's like so, the, just the anchoring down, just make sure make that your sure hand stays, stays in position where it needs to be. Yeah. But um, I get the same like kind of a uh, comment with like, oh, should I use four fingers instead of three? Yeah. It's just really all like personal preference and yeah. different styles of, of of playing the ukulele. One style is not better than the other or one style is not wrong where the other style is correct it's just a different way of playing mm -hmm. um you know we have uh we have some students here that play with their like with their middle finger and i'm not about to be like hey stop <laughs> stop doing that <laughs> i think it's like if they're comfortable with doing that yeah. then that's that's just how you're gonna do it you know like i would like them to incorporate their their other fingers or whatever and start to kind of get used to them but i'm not gonna be like hey ooh, that's wrong you know the kind of that's kind of like telling um Who's that guy with the uh, with, with with the thumb? He used to do like like uh like he's he's the dude that did the um like the parallel octaves with with the electric guitar kind of started using his thumb. I can't believe I forget <laughs> forgetting his name now. Anyway, there was like a jazz uh there was a jazz guitar player that like um was uh was kind of using his thumb because he didn't want to wake people up you oh. know like yeah do you remember yeah I, yeah yeah I right know, I, <laughs> I can't think yeah. of his name right now isn't it who wrote like Sleepwalk. Um, is it? I don't. Valos, uh, Valis? Rick, no, 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 not Richie Valens. It's, it wasn't Richie Valens. It was somebody I forget who. But yeah, it's like it's like this kind of thumb technique and stuff. And most people would be like, "Hey, that's like that's kind of wrong. Like, don't do that." But that's that became kind of his signature, you know, signature style, his signature tone and whatnot. So don't be afraid to kind of play ukulele, however it's calling out to you to play it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Alan said that uh, my guitar teacher told me to yeah. stop anchoring yeah. uh, and it results in more uh, movement in the ring finger. Mm -hmm. But I think that that's also a thing is that's a guitar thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I've, <laughs> I've, I've heard that too, where yeah. uh, classical guitarists will, will normally teach you not, not to, to. Mm -hmm. put your pinky down. Mm -hmm. Like they don't want your, or your pinky floating even. Mm -hmm. they, they want it curled up and for you to mm -hmm. kind of have it like with yeah. your other fingers too. Yeah. Um, but like... And they're very accurate, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And with, with yeah. six strings, like all five all, fingers mm -hmm. are... That are makes important. sense. That makes sense. But, but somebody who does do that with guitar is yeah. like Andy McKee. He, mm -hmm. he... And, Anchors. Yeah. And he pe people call him out on that. They're like, mm -hmm. oh, he's really good, but why is he doing yeah. that? And he's like, well, he didn't learn classical guitar. He learned... Mm -hmm. Like just a regular yeah. steel string, yeah. Um, yeah, steel string finger picking. So yeah. it, and and I think too with the uh, ukulele, that's the thing you'll you'll probably see is if somebody uses their ring finger a lot for mm -hmm. finger picking, mm -hmm. they might anchor less because it mm -hmm. is like a kind of a stretch to yeah. both put your pinky down and use your ring finger. Yeah. Uh, and where if they use their just their thumb pointer and middle, mm. then you might see them anchoring more with both their ring and their ring yeah. uh, and pinky finger too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's no like right or wrong way really to uh to <clears throat> I mean I guess there is a wrong way to like to play and do things but um the different styles it's really just like a style if you want to float your fingers and stuff totally do that if you don't want to if you want to um if you want to anchor I myself got proficient at both like I can do it you know with with kind of floating like I said but it's not as accurate for me that to to do that especially live you know or if, mm -hmm. if I'm playing on stage and stuff I would I wouldn't really resort um you know resort to this if I'm playing on stage, it would almost always be um, anchored just to make sure that I have control over where my fingers are going to be on the right side. I think uh, a song, and yeah, like if you're you're kind of just doing arpeggios throughout mm -hmm. the whole song, 
it probably isn't totally necessary necessary for That's you true. to anchor yeah. cuz you're you're yeah if you're not moving you're too just much you're playing the same things over and over yeah. Yeah. yeah but like and then the order doesn't matter that much no, i mean no, no, no. The, it yeah. kind of does matter <laughs> but it you know, if you're just arpeggiating the yeah. chord, mm-hmm. the order of the strings that you mm-hmm. play doesn't yeah. matter as much. So yeah. it's, and like it's I mean, still I, gonna sound good because <clears throat> you're just playing the chord. Yeah, I mentioned it right in the beginning. It's like it the the whole like you know like floating hand thing. Yeah, it's probably like some guitar players. So you know, with uh, with Alan telling us these guitar teachers telling him not to do that. Yeah, that but makes then, sense. Yeah, that makes sense yeah. for guitar. But then he says that his other ukulele teacher tells him to anchor too. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, that's it's, a uke player yeah. telling you to uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to do that. It's yeah. just. <clears throat> really it's two different styles it's that's that's what it is you just have to take a look at it as two different styles someone's gonna tell you like hey don't worry your head backwards like this makes sense like the visor is supposed to like protect you from the sun mm-hmm. and you know another guy is like no put it in the back you know, <laughs> yeah. get, your I neck need, might get sunburned <laughs> I, I need it in, in, need it backwards in order to draw draw my bow <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, who's that? <laughs> yeah, I, I wear a hat and I, I got to put it backwards because oh. the string won't come to no. my face. It won't go Ash far Ketchum enough. over here yeah. has to, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And his archery skills. <laughs> I, I I legit, I can shoot okay, but I sometimes I do like, I'll stop and turn it backwards because I'm like, I'm shooting terribly right now. Yeah. With I was the, telling uh, Kai about over the top. It that movie like from yeah, the, yeah. From the that's 80s. exactly what i yeah. said oh really yeah when he when he told me that he had to put his hat backward in order to we to made the same archery. 80s reference yeah, yeah. yeah. and Kahai is like younger than us so he didn't know what, what the movie I, was about but i just knew it from aldrin yeah telling me yeah, yeah. over the top over the top sylvester yeah. stallone i mean for those people who don't know this the our my best synopsis is is a man trying to fight for custody of his child through, through arm, arm wrestling, <laughs> through arm wrestling, yeah. Take that as you want. No, it's, it's a surprisingly so... good movie. Yeah, it's a... <laughs> is it though? <laughs> no, it is. Yeah, I, I guess, mean, I guess. Yeah, because as far as eighties movies goes. Yeah, because uh, my girlfriend and I yeah. watched it. Oh, re- really? Recently. Oh, yeah. Does it hold one, up? That's I one of my favorite movies, <laughs> and um, and just the kind of the storyline. Yeah. She, after after we watched it, yeah. she was like, "That was." actually pretty good <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. so maybe you should give it a try Kai. you should watch over the top it is it's yeah. a yeah <laughs> yeah movie? movie recommendation we should do yeah. a movie recommendation every i'm now so and then. You blow on the ground <laughs> presents over the top <laughs> over I, the top <laughs> too like when i when i shoot my bow i shoot outside i shoot yeah. in my my backyard which is pretty big so mm-hmm. um and nobody's watching nobody cares but yeah. every time like i have my hat flip backwards mm-hmm. i'm just like walking to get my arrows and if i don't remember it i kind of like feel embarrassed before i, I turn it back <laughs> like oh, oh no i gotta turn you it. like look around and then like turn, looking, turn your hat no, no. <laughs> too cool right now <laughs> i'm not i'm not shooting I, I'm, yeah. turn as if a person shooting a bow in their backyard isn't already <laughs> like yeah. so- something that you would be like what is that guy doing yeah, <laughs> yeah i've been called out a few times already, <laughs> yeah. so yeah anyway um you said uh, it was a two-parter uh yeah oh, i was gonna say something else too um <laughs> oh uh one like you it, it is it is true that you don't there isn't like songs specifically made for mm-hmm. like floating or anchoring yeah, or anything no. really but a song that i i think of that might it might help if you like anchor is like songs like um out of my league right because mm-hmm. like that finger picking it's it's yeah. a pattern but it's not it's like not... a set pattern yeah. and then you gotta do... melody lines yeah and you have to do like two strings at once too yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so like that kind of those those things where it's like a little it's bit a more good, complex good than arpeggios mm-hmm. yeah, uh, you might want to check that out like out of my league that's so oh, that's mm-hmm. old school that's going yeah. all the way back to single digits Deep cut double mm-hmm. double digits <laughs> yeah um okay and and then the next part of his mm. question was um uh my main question is about how you can get better accuracy when you are mixing picking and strumming mm. uh, an example of something i just can't get right is the johnny cash style alternating single bass notes with strumming mm-hmm. uh generally when you go from a strum to a picking part how do you make sure you hit the right position i can't anchor because of the strumming but without it it's a bit hit and miss Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have any tips? I figured it might just need a lot of practice, but unlike most things that I've tried to learn, I never seem to reach a point where this becomes automatic and re- reliable. Mm. After a few bars, I always mess it up, especially 
if I pick up the speed a bit. Mm-hmm. So. Well, from what it sounds like, if he's saying like, oh, after a few bars that I do it, it means that you can do it, you know? So if you're already, you know, uh, in the groove of, of doing that, te- that technique, for those of you folks who don't know, it's kind of like this. Where you're kind of picking and then strumming at the same time. Or alternating between picking and strumming. Sounds like something that that kind of style would sing. Anyway, um, with that, uh, because it sounds like you already kind of you know you already kind of know what uh, know what to do or know how to do the technique. It, it is just a lot of you know a lot of practice. And don't knock it till you try it, but like slow it down and then um then kind of build up you know build up speed. That's that's the only way that you're going to kind of get accuracy and consistency. Because if you can kind of like build up to it. Yeah, and one this, one of the this, things too that you kind of yeah, one of the things that you gotta keep in mind it's basically still a down up down up down up down up down up strum. It's it's going this fast, okay? And that's what we kind of tell you guys to twist your wrist because what you're doing with your thumb it's it's a down strum, mm-hmm. and then you're kind of bringing it back up again to do another down strum. So so watch it goes down with the thumb, lifting it up. And then down. So it's kind of doing like doing a down, down strum. You're just skipping that up. So down, then up, down. So. And then here, well, if we kind of alternate to the G. So for the G, I hit the down on the G. And I actually hit the up with my pointer fingers. So down, oh sorry, C, down, G, up, down, up, C, down, G, up, down, up. But notice that my hand is still doing that down, up, down, up, down, up. So as long as you can keep this consistency of down, up, down, up, down, up, maybe start from there. You know, if you don't want to do the slow too fast or like, oh, you know, just practice for like five weeks or something, then you'll get it. If that's like, um, if that's not gonna work for you, then, then try this out. It's really just, if you get this groove, it's down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And you want to just kind of align it with that groove. Yeah. And then, yeah, your 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 uh, wrist is still, on yeah. Accuracy mm-hmm. after that. Your, your, uh, your wrist is still the same. Mm-hmm. It's still doing this kind of pulse, mm-hmm. you know? So uh, stem from there. Go from here and then work your way up to your fingers. But really, it's just this. So if I took away all those uh, all those pickings, it's still the same. Yeah. The. It, it's it is like a kind of a guitar technique that mm-hmm. like a lot of people hear and then they're like oh i want to do it on ukulele mm-hmm. but the thing about taking it to ukulele mm-hmm. is if you play a high g it's a little bit harder because you're aiming for that low c right mm-hmm. where with guitar you like your fingers will probably like your thumb will probably mm-hmm. hit the lowest note anyways mm-hmm. so it's like way easier to be less accurate on guitar mm-hmm. yeah. than it is yeah. or be- low g yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah yeah you could do that uh but it, like kind of uh if you're doing it and you feel like oh man i hit the the yeah. g or i hit another one of the strings mm-hmm. like mm, people probably won't notice like as long as you keep playing mm-hmm. and it's like one of those techniques where it's nice if you're accurate but it's not like the end of the world if you're not and yeah. it's probably better if like you don't focus on that mm-hmm. and you just keep trying to yeah. keep it almost like uh just keep it steady yeah. like if you keep it steady you'll probably uh be more accurate anyways than if you're just like trying to like ah oh, i gotta hit, make sure i hit the c every single time mm, like it's, yeah. it's yeah. No- also also i think um <clears throat> i i know you mentioned before like playing in the dark mm, yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah so like I, you don't have to necessarily play in close the your dark, eyes you can even close your but eyes but you yeah, yeah if you the, like 
if you don't look at your ukulele mm-hmm. and just do Go it more feel. by feel, mm-hmm. I think you'll get it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sensei. Yeah, yeah sensei. Aaron <laughs> over here. Trust Cause, your No, well, because like, I do that a lot. Um, yeah. Like, you know, when we're... if in the rare event that i actually have to do a picking like yeah. like that uh <laughs> sunday morning or something uh-huh. like that like anytime that i'm thinking about it i mess up <laughs> and then every, just, anytime that i do it by it feel like mm-hmm. just by you know because mm-hmm. my fingers know where to go right it's just that i have to trust that they do you know <laughs> so it's it, some some of it is that too because um because yeah i'm not very good at like you know mm-hmm. actual picking mm-hmm. or like finger picking like uh, yeah. but if i do it by feel and don't worry about it as much it yeah. usually comes out just better do. yeah yeah. Just, yeah i mean same thing with with anything if you uh and we tell people this like on on some of the new workshops that we've been doing lately is that like if you think about the strumming pattern that's like when things kind of get messed up and yeah. stuff. Yeah. if you um you know if you think about like the what lyrics you're gonna be you're gonna be singing that's like it's gonna get messed up you know, if <laughs> yeah. you just but if you just sing the song like don't even think about it just like as if you were in your car because for some reason when you're in your car you know all the words <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know but then like when you're on stage it's like oh my god what is the next yeah, verse you I know like remember the yeah I, what, what is it you know but or like if you're in the shower you just know everything you know uh, um but yeah, it's it's kind of like that. So you just have to be like Elsa and just let it go. <gasps> Kai, yeah, yeah. Frozen reference. Yeah, um, <laughs> Frozen Two is so. coming out. I saw that. Saw that. Uh, uh, I, I was saying, <laughs> okay, gotta say this. This is nothing new to Kulala. <laughs> but you guys made a Frozen Two reference months, months back, months uh, back, uh-huh. and I thought you guys were joking. <laughs> like <laughs> that, there's a Frozen Two. Is this kind of like, haha, straight to straight to video, you know, uh-huh. kind of kind of movie and stuff. Like, yeah, I guess so. Frozen's probably good. They're probably on Frozen Four by now. Straight to you know, straight to home video kind of thing. And then um, there's like a new trailer that got released like a day or two ago and stuff. I'm uh-huh. like, what? Frozen 2 is this a is, real thing. This is happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. It has nothing yeah. to do with anything, yeah. but I, I just dismissed it as if it was like a joke, but I'm like, oh no, it's, it's happening. Kind of yeah. like when someone told me like, oh, there's an Angry Birds 2 movie. It's like, or or the Angry Birds 1 movie. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah that's, that can't be real. Like that's, and then lo and behold, there's the Angry Birds movie. Like, no. <laughs> yeah. And then the Emoji movie. I was like, that can't be yeah. real. And then there it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, was... The guitarist hmm. Wes Montgomery. Yes, <laughs> yes. So Wes that, Montgomery. That's, uh, that's yes. kind of like yeah. a long. <laughs> yeah. See, we all everything. You know, for that jazz guitarist <laughs> that plays with his thumb. Yeah, that's that's all. Yeah, Wes Montgomery. Like he just kind of you know like does this technique and does a lot of um, those parallel octaves. That's kind of how he you know started doing that uh, that technique. Where the like he didn't want to wake people up and stuff so he yeah. just practices electric guitar which is already like a quiet Side guitar and stuff and kind of did um did stuff with his thumb so and people are like oh why would you do that why wouldn't you use a pick or whatever like crank it up to 11 it's like no people are sleeping you know so uh west montgomery good stuff uh jake actually has a uh huh we haven't had that button in a long time <laughs> fun fact uh jake big fan of west montgomery um that's kind of how he you know did the the, the uh, parallel octaves oh, and stuff that's yeah that's, that's from, from from west montgomery yeah uh-huh. uh, we had this discussion before and he wrote a song called west on four on one of his albums uh-huh. and that's a uh kind of a tribute to a uh, west montgomery oh, wow. the song's called west on four and um it was part uh i first heard that song as part of um the like the, the kind of art of ukulele, I forgot what that show was called, but it was like him, Peter Moon, um, Kelly Boyd, uh, Kelly Boyd de Lima, yeah, there's uh, those those three dudes and stuff, and they were kind of doing uh doing like all like their own segments, and one of the segments that Jake did was West on Four, and like what and is this song? <laughs> like this I I know we uh we mentioned that before, and that's yeah. one of those things where it's kind of like. Uh, it's hopefully somebody puts it up yeah. online, you know. Yeah, like, I, I mean, I have, I think I have a videotape of it, and I don't know how to put take video like yeah. VHS videos <laughs> into like uh, you know into a digital format. How do you how do you do that? I'm, s- I don't know how to. I don't know. How- I'm sure people are like, ah, oh, you just use this thing. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I have a bunch of videos that like. <laughs> pure heart videos from like you know uh, mm. anytime they were on tv i basically i was super obsessed with like anything 
that I could consume that was like ukulele, you mm-hmm. know, like back then. It's not like YouTube now where it's like, just search up for ukulele. There's like a billion videos, like, uh, uh, you know, all about ukulele. Before it's like, you would have to wait. And then they're like, oh, hot Hawaiian nights on whatever, on yep. Thursday or Friday nights and stuff. It's like, okay, who's who's going to be on? Do they have an ukulele? It's like, okay, cool, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll take that, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I've been working on the Pua Olena uh, yeah. solo. So, uh, like, I've been looking up, like, uh, the song on YouTube and stuff. Yeah. And what was cool is, like, Island Rhythms, like, their Hot Hawaiian Nights. Oh, yeah? Somebody put it up. And oh, I was cool. like, how did you even get this? This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, however must, you did that, I would like to know. <laughs> it must It must have been, like, somebody like you who just, like, yeah. recorded VHS and then riffed yeah. it or something. But it's, like, yeah. incredible that it, that's on YouTube yeah. now. It's... It was cool. What I really liked, um, there was that episode with uh, with with Jay Kelly Boy and um, and Peter Moon. They did Pandanus. It was like oh. the first time that I've ever heard the song Pandanus, and I'm uh-huh. like, this song is amazing. I gotta <laughs> learn this song. This song is so good. And like, you know, I, I've always known that Peter Moon was really good, and, and I've I've heard like Sunday Manoa and all his like you know legendary pickings like Kavika. For those people mm-hmm. who know Kavika, the the Jake cover, it was a cover by Kyle Critter Boy's first. And the original was um, was Peter Moon. He made that like uh, it was back then considered like the Hotel California of, of ukulele. Like if you mm-hmm. knew that picking, it's kind of like knowing the guitar picking to Hotel California. Was the, that was the equivalent of it and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, but you know, I I didn't really know like to what extent like how good Peter Moon was until like I saw him jam Pandanus. Like, uh-huh. That guy's really good, and he's like jamming next to Jake. And back then, Jake was like infallible for me. You know, or, like uh-huh. Jake was the guy. You know? <laughs> and I'm like, man, this this old man's catching up to Jake. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> And then yeah. I educated myself, and I'm just like, oh, okay, yeah. that's who that guy that's is. <laughs> that's who that is. Yeah. <laughs> what is what is that that meme where it's like, I'm about to make this this person's career. <laughs> like Peter Moon can probably yeah. like Peter Moon is just like, I'm about to make this whole like <laughs> 20 generations of musicians in Hawaii's careers because so many people like base their their songs or yeah. do stuff based off of mm. him and his band. Yeah, yeah. so it's it's like crazy. He he really is like one of those people that and it's crazy now that people are like yeah they know jake mm. like they know jake's version of mm. kovika but mm. they don't know kyle crater boys or they don't know peter it was, moon it was good it was a good lineup um peter moon I, I think everyone played one song each and then they played pandanas together and like i think that's from what i remember uh peter moon played his version of fur elise like he did like uh, an ukulele solo in the beginning with like the guitar kind of playing in the background and then like um, and then it kind of build up to this like kind of almost loungy like kind of uh, um, not tropical but kind of like Latin feel you know mm-hmm. like a furry lease. I'm like this is this is freaking cool. Yeah. <laughs> like um, of course Kelly Boy did uh, Masesi. He did uh, Masesi for his stuff because it's kind of like saying here's like kind of the classical guy playing ukulele and, and doing Hawaiian songs and whatever you know, classical ukulele which is Peter Moon and here's like a vocalist. Um, which is Kelly Boy de Lima. And then here's like a new guy that's kind of taking the ukulele to new heights. I think that was the whole, like, um, uh, the whole premise of, of, the, of the show. Uh, Jake did um, West on 4, and then they all jammed Pandanus together. And it was like two songs that I've never heard Jake play ever. I'm like, what is this? Because West on 4 didn't come out until way afterwards, like in a, in a maybe third al- third or fourth album or something like that. I, I don't remember. But West on 4 wasn't, wasn't available when that thing aired. And he was using his super concert ukulele. Oh, and it was like right. another. It's it's so it's such a rare video. Like I want, I have it. I'm gonna figure out how to how to digitize uh, digitize 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 yeah. it. And um and I'm gonna post it up for people. Yeah. As soon as I figure out how to do that, I'm gonna post up that video because that's I have like a VHS or a few VHS like that I refer to as like the ukulele bibles. That's like like you these are like the quintessential like videos. That you you have to be obsessed with in order to you know <laughs> really get into ukulele and those I have in my collection. <laughs> I it it's always cool to hear people mm-hmm. kind of talk like that or like stuff like that because uh, I think there is like a picture of like Michael Phelps mm-hmm. with like uh you know it's like a little kid like who's a swimmer and they're mm-hmm. taking a picture like oh thanks for taking a picture with yeah. me. And that kid went on to like beat <laughs> Michael Phelps like oh, later really? on or yeah. something. He got good really? enough to, to beat him. It's crazy. So it's like cool that you have like this is like, mm. oh, 
<laughs> like have this video of Kelly Boy yeah. and Jake and stuff, and now you like you know Jake yeah, and Kelly I've, Boy too. Yeah, huh. that's so. true. Kelly Boy, uh, fun fact. I think I told this before and stuff. Like, um, he's now a Connie Leo player. Uh, at Connie Leo, I have my own stash of like of uh, of wood sets that I kept for myself. Mm-hmm. And um, so they they make yeah your ukulele. They make my ukulele. Like the, the ukulele is that you play that I play. Yes. It's out so, of those those yep, sets of wood those sets of wood and like um i was a big fan of this one log and that's why they set set log 50 and log 80 aside for all aldrin models and aldrin uh like just my stuff in general like so if you buy an aldrin ukulele it's either log 50 those are the first ones that came out then log 80 which is um like the second batch of aldrin guerrero ukuleles. it's that it's like uke in the back yeah yes that's log 50 exactly right over there yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, um, you know, Kelly Boy comes into uh, comes into Kanilea, and uh, like Joe's like, okay, well, what about this one, or what about this, you know, wood set? He's like about to make his uh, his his custom ukulele, and then Kelly Boy is like, oh, what about that one? He, he sees my like my little cubby hole with like my stuff. In it. He's like, what about that? I was like, oh, uh, this is like a dream set, and like I get a phone call from Joe, and uh, and Joe's like, well, dream, someone wants to, t- to talk to you real quick. I was like, oh, okay, okay, and Kelly Boy comes on the phone. He's like, hey, brother, uh, this is Kelly Boy uh, from Atena. I was like, okay, be still, my beating heart. <laughs> uh, um, hey. Man, how's it how's it going? It's like, oh, uh, I was taking a look at some of these wood sets that you got. Oh, I uh, I can I can sample one set. I was like, yes, <laughs> like, yes. Uh, and he's yeah, like, yeah, sure, that, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no big deal. Yeah. Whatever, it's, it's it's cool. You can you can take one. So he's like, ah, oh, Mahalo's brother. And then like when it finally came out, and then um he so he like he knows me now. Like we're we're, we're friends now and stuff. He's like, oh, there's my Uke brother. Like you know, it's like yes, we yeah, are yeah. Uke brothers. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. so, I'm come from the same log and stuff. And it's one of those things that kind of like you you know you said like oh that little kid beat Michael. I didn't beat Kelly Boy in any way, but it's no, kind of like no. I feel yeah. like we're colleagues now. You know, uh-huh. instead of like. Oh man, like this. You're just like a fan, like yeah, a super I have fan. VHS as a you know, yeah. I'm like stored in my parents' yeah. house and stuff. That's like it, that I used to watch religiously, like mm. every day. Yeah, I think they 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 when they show that picture mm. of like that little kid next to Michael yeah. Phelps, they show like another picture where they're like shaking hands <laughs> at like the medal award yeah. ceremony. So it's like <laughs> kind of the same thing. Yeah, like yeah, you, you just have those those things from before, and then now you like. You actually yeah, know it's them. cool. Cause um, like the last time we we even played a show, to, yeah, we played a bunch of shows together. Um, the last time we we shared the stage together was uh, uh Ola Kaina, which was last year, well, almost uh, almost a year ago actually, at the Hawaii Theater. So it's like being at Hawaii Theater, being on that stage and sharing that stage with like Kelly Boy Delima. It's it's it was really cool. You know, I'm a, <laughs> I think what's cool, fanboy's dream come true. <laughs> I think what's or one of the coolest things that we might have like put out um, mm. in the past few years is like you, Willie K, and um, Carly, Carly, yeah, yeah playing that's cool. together, yeah, three different generations, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly, it's the same thing too, mm. and and I know Carly like says like, oh, I'm really so stoked to be playing with these guys because yeah. like I look up to both of them. <laughs> And, and then she like kills it too. Is like, yeah. oh my gosh, pro, pro. She's a pro. She's yeah, a pro. it's like, oh, we're we're leaving it in good hands. <laughs> like, just take it, good Carly. Stuff. And you know, like the more more videos I watch from her and stuff, like she, the more like solo she's taking recently. It's like, mm-hmm. man, she's, she's getting better. She's and better. getting so good. Yeah, it's as if like she wasn't already good. Yeah. You know, like yeah. with her vocals and her chord choices too and stuff. And now mm-hmm. he's she's playing guitar. And it just really, really, really reminds me of uh, of, of Amy Winehouse. Because Amy Winehouse, people don't know, but she's an like, amazing guitar player. If you mm-hmm. watch, like, mm-hmm. earlier videos of Amy Winehouse, like, she used to play live, like, with her guitar. And she wasn't playing, like, G, like, straight-up mm-hmm. G, D chords. She's playing jazz chords because she, she was a huge fan of jazz from mm-hmm. back in the day. I think she's, like, a great well, guitarist. Yeah, so Carly's, like, following that <laughs> footstep. So she's playing some nice, like, nines and 13 chords and stuff. It's, like... Well, like, I think even, knows. like... Questlove, he mm. said that like, oh yeah, Amy introduced me to a bunch of mm. like jazz that yeah. I would have never known about. Mm. Uh-huh. Like, so even somebody who's like as much of a like music lover, mm-hmm. like yeah, that just shows like Amy Winehouse was like, mm. oh yeah, you sh- you should check out these things. <laughs> and I, I feel like Carly is the same thing too. Like, mm. and at- yeah, her song choices, like because <laughs> yeah. like, we're trying to collaborate her again. <laughs> it was it was funny what like at Nam when Carly was like singing and stuff. Yeah. Cause there would be like a group of people just standing around them, yeah. and I'd be like videotaping or whatever, and they they would say, "Oh, who is this girl? Like, yeah. 
how old is she? Like, yeah. What, yeah. what's going on? She was like on? 15, 16 at the time or something. Yeah. And, and you could see like reps or like people like calling over other people yeah. too, like being like, yeah. you got to check out her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This girl. Yeah. <laughs> cool. cool. Yeah. Good. Uh, do we have any qu- other questions? We really only answered that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we that, that was the only tangents. one we had from mm. last week. So pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I've been, a, I mean, I, I'm sure the people who listen to this podcast kind of know already. I'm like obsessed with the ukulele from like the get go. I was a huge fan from like from from back then, and you know it's just I haven't I haven't lost it one bit because like every time like a hero of mine would like hit me up or or I meet and stuff, I'm all I always revert back to that boy like that uh, that used to like tape hot Hawaiian nights on his VHS because like. It's always really, really, really cool whenever I meet like some, uh, some people. even like non ukulele players. Like um, I know Noel Okimo, uh, Okimoto plays for uh, plays drums for for Jake and has played drums on Jake's albums and stuff, and he plays with them live. And Dean Taba and stuff plays bass for him. So um, I went to I uh, went to a show where uh, where it wasn't like an ukulele show, but um, Noel Okimoto was uh, was playing drums, and I was like so like excited to meet him. I'm like, oh man, what was it like playing with? With Jake and and the, how about how about your solo for uh for for Spain? It was so good, you know. Like it's one of those like and going to Dean Tob and Dean Tob I met before, but I'm not like I don't know if he like knows me because he knows Mike. He knows Mike Odo because um, they're bass players and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But it's like remember that remember that solo that you did? That, like you know, kind of like Chris Farley and totally SNL. He doesn't you know? remember. Yeah. yeah, he's like, oh, uh, I think so. I think that was. It was like, yeah, that was that was cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's that, that, really cool. <laughs> Chris Farley, yeah. SNL character, yeah. yeah, like when he met like a uh, was that Paul McCartney or something. Like, remember when you were with the Beatles? <laughs> that was cool. That's pretty cool. It's kind of like that where I'm like, remember when you played bass for Jake's album? <laughs> that was that was super cool. <laughs> I just, yeah, I, I was a huge like huge nerd like ukulele nerd back uh-huh. then. I just saw an interview with mm. uh, Paul McCartney and uh, Stephen Colbert was interviewing mm. Paul McCartney, and it was funny because like uh, they had a picture of uh, Paul and John together, yeah. and he's like, "Do you got? Do you know what song you guys are working on in there?" <laughs> and Paul just like looks at him, he's like, "No, do you know what song I'm working on with that picture?" <laughs> I'm creepy. Yeah, he's like, uh, "No, no." So it, it, yeah, it's just it's just. Funny when when or like uh, the fact that you would go up yeah. to people and be like, oh, you remember this? And it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that I played drums then or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. Or I mean, like when I first, um, one of the first times I met I met Jake, or like one of the times that we were kind of hanging out together and stuff. Um, it's like, oh, why don't why don't we play this song? It's like, okay, cool, I know how to play that song. It's like, oh, um, can you do that like that solo that you did in like in that one video that I saw? He's like, um, I'll try. I mean, it was kind of like this. I was like, no, no, it was like this. Like, and I kind of yeah. show you do it note for note, like you know. And he's like, oh, okay, exactly but what he improvised. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, I get that nowadays too. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's yeah. so funny that like, hey, um. I know you said uh, just like improvise, improv on like on Europa and stuff, but can uh, you like note out exactly what you did? I was uh, like, I don't know what I, you, I don't yeah. know what I did. Can you right. it out, please? A uh, more recent one, right? Yeah. It was like, oh, can you do the the same thing you did at Little Wing in Little Wing <laughs> that you, you played for the yeah. play along? Yeah, that one time. <laughs> and it was like, oh. I, I don't know. Like, I've jammed Little Wing at like must be thousands of times now you know i don't, I don't yeah. know which one well, time well that like... one that one is tough too because i've tried tapping out the, mm. the exact thing that yeah. you <laughs> you did and i can't get the timing right yeah you know mm. it's just such a such a free form mm-hmm, kind of mm-hmm. solo or like you know intro yeah i just i can't do it justice it through tab <laughs> so Sorry, so like, sorry for everybody who's yeah, been asking. And so people that ask me that and stuff, like I, I just, I just smile only because, like, man, that's that's the kind of you know, like that, that's the kind of fire that I had like back then where I'm like, hey, can you can you play that one solo from that that episode of Hot Hawaiian Nights? <laughs> you know, it's kind of like <laughs> yeah. that. Like, oh, it's it's cute, it's cute, it's really it's really cool because that's that was me. I was like kind of bright eyed, like just, oh, can you? Can you do this? Well, it kind of sounds like, and there have been people like I've met like festivals, like oh, it kind of it goes like this. Like, let me show you how it goes. I'm like, mm-hmm. that sounds like something I would do. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, that sounds like it's definitely that's something definitely I would those do. are no, those are my notes. <laughs> you know, who? Yeah. Maybe oh. Jim, Jim in the in the chat. What's that? And maybe he could tab it out. If, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> 
and yeah, Little Wing. Yeah. The intro to Little Wing. People mm. keep asking about that. Press the Dominator button. Maybe I'm, yeah, I'm <laughs> not. Break Dominator out of uh, out of retirement. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, I'm not good enough mm. at figuring out um, how to how to notate it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know what numbers mm-hmm. and In what, what string. Yep. Yeah, you're hit. You're hitting, but. To do it musically, like you know, through musical notation, because that's how all the tab programs work, mm-hmm. right? You, you, have, you to have to have use the musical mm-hmm. notation, and it has to kind of fit within each measure. Yeah, like I, I know the feel of it, but I can't for the life yeah. of me figure out how <laughs> many dotted like sixteen <laughs> notes or whatever it has to be. Or or if it's like a dotted sixteen to like a regular sixteen. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. And then it yeah. has to equal up to mm. four in yeah. the measure. So yeah. somehow. Sometimes I like are just doing some tabs for like the solos. I'm like, this is a Hawaiian song. Why do yeah. I'm gonna just like mm, <laughs> it's kind of like that like yeah. all the ones land at least like that's what I know <laughs> like and it'll get you there so you kind of just gotta write it it's like oh this is as best I can do it and some people are like oh how come you didn't put in like all the strumming and stuff <laughs> I'm like it looks so bad already yeah. like there's just too yeah. much information you, going you, on that if you like, add too it's just, much uh, it's just not even it's um, not helpful. legible yeah like you, it's hard to read so it's yeah. just like kind of a give and take where you got to tab mm. out, you know, the necessary parts and stuff. Yeah. And mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. There's like a bunch of stuff that you did for pool and on that. I'm just like, ah, no, these are the the melody notes. <laughs> oh. These are the main parts. So, I mean, Spoilers. Do this. <laughs> pool. <Yeah. Lena. laughs> yeah. When, when I when I tab out, like my main concern is like, will people be able to learn from this and will mm. they be able to play with using this? Mm. And as long as that I get that, I'm kind yeah. of like, oh, good. yeah, that's I got to just that's, do that's that. the mission. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, that's good. Man. As much as people want other stuff, it's just like, oh, sorry, I got to yeah. do that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of like other like fanboy kind of things that that I did. I the, I remember I was I believe Reno. There's um there's that performance in Reno where we played Little because speaking of Little Wing, I played it um, with with James Hill, um, Mike Powers, and Brittany Paiva. Was there anybody else? I think those are the you know those those were the uh, those are the players. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> I already originally just wanted to play with that with 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 James. Like I asked James to you know to kind of play and stuff, but it's kind of tough when you're backstage you know and you're like. I know, I know this is sound, starting to sound like a first world problem. It's kind of tough when you're backstage with all these great reasons. Anyway, like, <laughs> <laughs> so well, uh, I'm trying to practice with James because we're just like, okay, let's let's run this. Like, I want to do that and stuff. And like, you know, Brittany Paiva and Mike Powers is kind of like watching. It's like, oh, are you guys going to do that? And like, oh, do you, do you guys want to join in? And, you know, that's cool, I guess. Like, I guess we all could play this song. But, you know, I'm like, I just want to play with James, really. But <laughs> it's like, I, yeah, yeah, you guys Mike, you can go. I mean, that's cool. Mike, you can you can play with us too. That's cool. Brittany, you you might as well come and and and, and, and play too and stuff. But um, <clears throat> my point being, I go up to I go up to James and like, hey, um, because uh, James Hill, his version of Little Wing for me is the best instrumental version of that song that and that that's why you wanted to yeah. play it with yes, him right yes like it's because you knew mm-hmm. that version that, that version was the was the version that inspired me to play it on the ukulele because i used to play that song exclusively on electric guitar i never thought like you know of, of playing little wing on the ukulele until i heard james hill do it mm-hmm. and james hill plays it like uh you know like mm-hmm. solo wise i'm just like okay cool why don't i just kind of um take the uh, the Jimi Hendrix version and kind of make it for mine, but I wanted you know I wanted to play that with him and I'm just kind of like okay cool I've listened to that record many 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 times and stuff I've uh, you know I can kind of play that with with James and it's gonna be great but um since we brought everyone else in it's just kind of like okay well like a uh, 20 minute long like little like instrumental little wing is gonna be a little bit too much so I'm like why don't we do the original key original version and whatnot and it's kind of like straight away from like oh it's, it's me James's thing <laughs> you know and um. And even more so because he uh, James is like, well, we have three ukulele players already, so I'm gonna if you don't mind, I'm gonna use my slide ukulele. And I'm like, yeah, I guess that's cool. I guess slide uke is cool, but you could 
I just really wanted to play that version from your album, you know, yeah. like and whatever. And I kind of wanted to hear you play. Yes, it. yeah. <laughs> and it was like, oh yeah, that's regular cool. ukulele. Like, yeah, that's cool. Like a slide duke is fine, James. <laughs> you know, like it was. I was reverted back to that kind of fanboy like kid. I was like, I just want to play this so, like with my ukulele hero, James yeah, Hill. You yeah. Know? yeah. <laughs> And um, but it was cool, you know. How like it turned out great, actually. Uh-huh. Like me, uh, Brittany, Mike Powers, and um, and and James Hill, we we played that song, and it's one of those that like ever since I played it at at Reno that way, I've begun to play with a bunch of players, you know, like that same exact way where like we all kind of take solos and mm-hmm. stuff and repeat the second verse, take more solos, and then end, you know. Like I've done it with like Kale Gamio, like and then with Jake and stuff, all these and you know, all these guys playing Little Wing together. So it became like due to that experience it kind of became a uh like my own thing instead of like i want to play this song with james so it's a happy ending to it but I, james if you're watching if you're listening you're probably not watching <laughs> this thing i would love to play that song i'd love another crack at that version of uh, i think it was in a flying leap thing uh, yeah a flying leap i think it was in that uh that that album little wing best instrumental version of Little Wing ever. I'm not saying that Jason Arimoto's Little Wing is not good because it is great. But James Hill, Flying Leap, Little Wing. Awesome. <laughs> it's a duet like with himself and so he did like regular uke and a um like a kind of like I think he was using a Risa, like a Risa electric ukulele mm-hmm. and it was really really cool. Check it out. Well, we we wanted to do Little Wing with Jason, right? Mm-hmm. Just because we knew he could yeah. like bring He's that blues feeling it, to yeah. it. So and like something that we like uh or he did gravity right and <laughs> I, I know like uh we were just like talking once mm-hmm. and i was like oh like h- how do you think you can do gravity justice on the uke and yeah. you were like well jason did it <laughs> and i was like oh yeah i guess so <laughs> yeah i forgot about that yeah jason is a beast man he's he's so good i can't wait to collab more with jason jason is another mm-hmm. one of those people who is just like um or like Carly, right? Yeah. Where it's just like, where does this come from? Because Jason, <laughs> you're such a happy person, but you can sing like you've been hurt deeply. <laughs> like, <laughs> but he's like this Asian kid who got a doctorate and stuff. Yeah. Like you don't know hard times at all, Jason. <laughs> and, <laughs> who owns a small coffee shop with ukuleles in it and stuff? It's like, what do you, what do you know about the blues, Jason? <laughs> he's just super relaxed, and like every time we see him, I think like. We we went and we filmed with him, and then we went to Nam. Mm-hmm. And at Nam, him and Patrice were like, "Oh, we got you goodie bags." <laughs> it was like, "Oh, thanks, Jason." <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, they're like, "Oh, before you guys head out, uh, come by the shop so we can make you like something special." And it's like they took like a uh, you know those single serve cinnamon toast crunch, and then they put like like uh, cold pressed coffee on it, so it's like a coffee cinnamon toast crunch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like man, that's. You guys are too nice. <laughs> you yeah, guys are, you guys are too nice, especially Patrice. They're, Patrice yeah. is an angel. Because <laughs> yeah. then they're like, "Oh, uh, we're usually not here this yeah. early, but come on, come over early because mm-hmm. we know you guys have to leave yeah. uh, before you guys leave, and then we'll make this for you." So yeah. it's just like, "Oh, what <laughs> yeah. is this?" And then we start eating. It's like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you guys are ever in the LA area, check out U Space. I mean, not just for ukuleles. For, uh, but also for coffee and for ukulele lessons. I know um, Jason does lessons there and stuff, and he does workshops, I, I believe, whenever people are in town and stuff. But U Space, one of the coolest like ukulele shops that I've ever been to because it's a small shop, yep. but they actually offer a lot. And it, it's really, really, really cool. It's in um, J- Japantown in LA, right? Mm-hmm. Japantown, yeah. LA, mm-hmm. U Space. What is Tell uh, him we sent you. He probably yeah. doesn't get any perks and stuff, but it's like, hey. <laughs> and he doesn't pay us to say that. We're yeah, just, yeah. It's just, yeah. We, we He's love just that a good store. guy. He's a good dude. <laughs> I think it's in the Japanese Cultural Center, right? Like it's a yeah. part of that. So if you look, up, if you don't know, JCCC something like that. Yeah, but like even that American Cultural Center. Yeah, I know we we've like sent other people to to a U space, and they said like, oh, I I ended up not getting Okola, but it was really fun just hanging out with Jason. Jason is like a really great guy. Yeah, all good dudes like over there and stuff. It's uh. It's a really cool space, so check that out. U space. Yep. Uh, anything else before we uh, before we wrap it up? Um, Sorry, excuse me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we wanted to solidify the date, the due date for this um this challenge. Kahai, what is the date? Solid date. Give me a solid date. 
so what is it what does it do for us so for us it's gonna be on the 10th mm-hmm. and then for everybody else it's gonna 17. be on the yeah 17th okay 10th and the 17th for us is the 10th so if you guys want to hear our songs uh tune in on the on the 10th I'm, i mean i know you guys listen to every single one of it so it doesn't really matter right <laughs> but uh the 10th is when ours are due if you guys want to check out our our songs for this the 17th if you want to uh submit one of your own in time to uh to to win a prize because we're, we're usually doing you know the prize drawing that, for, uh, for the people who, who do the song challenge uh yeah that, that reminds me um we actually had mm. one person submit already yeah. before i could even put up like the guidelines oh, really? into the forum <laughs> Uh, that was Renee. Oh, cool! And uh, Renee, something Renee did a really good job with her song, awesome. where she she incorporated hot sauce and everything. Mm. Uh, but something that she she kind of did that she was like a little bit confused on was yeah. she got confused with the major seventh and dominant sevenths. Mm. So she used dominant sevenths instead of major sevenths. Mm. And I told her like, oh, it's no big deal. We'll we'll count yeah, it anyways. We'll count it. Mm. Uh, but just something that you guys might want to be careful of, like yeah. major seventh and dominant sevenths are a Two little different bit different. Things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, dominant so, seventh is a half step lower, while major seventh um, is basically just a seventh. So what a dominant seventh is. So let's uh, explain this in C. So here is a C chord, right? So in C, if we were to put numbers in our C major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So here's the seven right here. And our chord is the one, three, and five. The first, the third, and the fifth note. So one, one, two, three. So these two, one and three. One, two, three, four, five, which is right here, this G string. So the C, E, C, E, G is your C chord. And we play this A string third fret because this eight is basically the same thing as a one. So C, if, yeah. if you play it here, if you play it here, if you play it here, those are all C chords because this A string then just becomes double of anything from up here. So this is a C chord. That's also a C chord. That's also a C chord. So if you're watching somebody, they're like doing this, like what is that fancy chord? It's like it's C. No big deal. <laughs> go to your go to your clubs or like next time they they bust out um, island style or something and everyone's doing the all the other, like mama's in the kitchen cooking the real nice. Bust one of these out. Mama People are like, oh snap! <laughs> what is that chord? Like, do, no big deal. Uh, They're from glow on the ground. <laughs> hey, anyway, so back to the, so back to do the it, seventh. Do it tastefully, though. Don't, yes. don't yeah. be annoying with it. Nah, just try them. Just don't, try them. Just, just, just do it. Just, yeah. <laughs> just try them. Everybody else is filling yeah. in everything yeah. else. I don't want somebody to be kicked out of their club and they're like, <laughs> oh, it took a lot on the ground told me to do that. <laughs> yeah. I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they said I could. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so um, let's let's go with the dominant sevens because the dominant sevens is everyone what everyone is is uh, is used to. So what a dominant seven is, you take the seventh note and you you flat it, flat it, you know, by by a half step. So you have the same one, one three, one three five. Remember we said this was seven, and we're gonna flat it by a half step. So one, one three five. Oh, one three, one three five, one three five flat seven, which is a dominant seven. So, so this is a C seven. C seven. Everyone should recognize this yeah. chord right here. Zero 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 one. one. Okay, what a major seven is is basically taking the seven and not doing anything with it, just playing, you know, uh, playing that seven with the one three five. So you have one, one three, one three five, one three five seven. That is a major seven. So this is a major seven. So that's zero 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 two, two. and zero 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 one is C seven. C seven. Yeah. So C seven. It's just easier to say C seven instead of saying C dominant seven every time. You yeah. know, like so C seven is the widely common term for uh, for the C dominant seven. Yeah, and that, that's that's kind of what confuses yeah. a lot of people. Is mm -hmm, they're like, mm -hmm. oh, but it says like C seven, but it's yeah. not the major seven. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's a different yeah. when yeah. you. If it's gonna be the major seven, you'll see it spelled out C mm -hmm. M A J seven, seven. Yeah. or so like the uh, yeah. 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 So that's the major sevens that we're talking about. So uh, another example, you know, if we have a little bit, we have a little bit of time. Okay, so G. So here's a G chord, right? So here are the one three fives of G. There's the one, 
here's the three, one and three, and here's the five. So it leaves here. But see, this one, this G is also the one. So you have one, one, three, one, three, five. Now this is basically A. So if you take that by a half step, so you have C string second fret, E string second fret, and A string second fret. So instead of this with the E string third fret, you're gonna move that and just basically bar the bottom three strings. So you have one, one, three, one, three, five, one, three, five, major seven. Yeah. So that's and zero, two, 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 two. And in the same sense, where like if you flat that seven, so you have one, one, three, one, three, five, one, three, five, flat seven. You yeah, should recognize this as G seven. seven. That's it. Yeah. So that's yeah. zero, two, zero, two, one, two. two. The chicken with the real nice beef stew on the stove. Oh, yeah. Just be careful. Just be careful. Just be careful. You could do that. You could. The uh, yeah. the thing I explained to you, Renee too, or I was like uh, talking to Renee about, is like I like to think of it like um, the dominant sevenths are like kind of feel more bluesy mm. and they feel like. They push it in, yeah. like in a certain way, and the major sevens kind of feel more mm -hmm. open and floaty. Like they don't necessarily need you to go mm -hmm. to the one or go yeah. to any yeah, like that, between a major and a minor. Yeah, it's kind of a tweener chord. There's a tension wanting to go to the uh, you know to to the chord. Usually the four chord, or yeah. whatever that's. Usually the four chord, or the one chord. So this goes to the one chord. It's Wait, one. So like that's it's the, one. that's your dominant seven. Yeah, C seven. Yeah, wants to go to. The, I guess that's that the one of that. It's I'm if I continue on this route, it's just gonna get more confusing. Yeah. So let's just say, but, but yeah, C7, but C7, no, I was, like I was saying that the major yeah. seven is like in between a oh, major yeah, yeah, and a minor yeah. chord. Yeah, and so it kind of like it feels like it can float and it can feels like it can mm -hmm. stay there yeah. for like a really long time. Yeah, like, it can stand on its own if if you want mm -hmm. it to. And it's like uh like waiting in vain rate right? uses yeah. like those major seventh chords. Yeah. And like a lot of songs where it only has like two chords kind of uses those major seventh chords because there's just like so much you can do with yeah, just yeah. those two things. Like they could function as a minor or a major. Yeah. Whereas the the sevenths, like this the dominant sevenths, yeah. they have to go somewhere. Or it sounds like uh un or Yeah. Yeah. guys that pretty much does it for another episode of thursday live lessons thank you so much for tuning in thank you for watching for all of our uu plus subscribers um and for those of you folks listening thank you so much for downloading this as a podcast make sure to check out ukulele on the ground.com sign up for uu plus to take your ukulele playing to the next level and also to watch this podcast sign up for uu plus so if you want to take uh private lessons from yours truly sign up for uu plus you want to talk to uh kahai you know on the daily sign up for uu plus <laughs> they could you could talk yeah. to Kahai like, you yeah. know, if you want to. I guess you could talk to any of us if you really wanted to. Yeah. Uh, via U plus, via Ukula on the ground. It doesn't even have to be plus, right? Um, right? Uh, you talk yeah. to a common man, right, Kai? You talk to a common man. Yeah, you, you can email <laughs> us at, at questions at Ukula on the ground. Yes. That, everybody can do that. So, yeah. I, yeah. If you guys want to ask us questions for the live lesson, uh, the question that we answered today wasn't from like a U plus member. He mm. was just like a yeah. normal member. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Or a uh, normal listener normal, normal watcher <laughs> he's so, a yeah. he's a person <laughs> yeah. he said he's been listening to the the podcast since it started so. all right on hey yeah. thanks buddy thanks so much for listening to our podcast thank you all all thank all of you for listening to the podcast and watching the uh watching the live version live feed of this uh, or live video of this podcast kahai works really 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 hard to make sure everything runs smoothly so how about a round of <laughs> for kahai we don't I don't recognize the heroes in the show enough. You know, just Kahai. He was stressing out right before the show started. We appreciate everything that you do and making the show run smoothly, Kai. Thank you very much. And we'll see you folks next time. Have a great one. Aloha. <laughs>